Hey everybody, and welcome to today's video. We're going to cover a topic that is quite interesting to say the least, and that is how would you approach modeling a scene if the only thing that you have for information or reference is just one image? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and try to cover this image. Uh, this was sent to me by one of the subscribers and they were asking or inquiring how can they match this image if they have nothing to go on except the actual image. So let's take a look at how we do uh, this particular step then. I'm going to start off by actually setting the image as a background image. So to do that, I'm going to go over here, press on the plus going to configure viewports or just press alt and b and go into background now here press use files and in here press on the files button once there just choose the image that you want to match which is in this case over here, uh, the one that i just chose and click on ok what will happen is this image will be set as your background image in this case in my perspective viewport i'm going to press alt w and go on full screen over here now i can see that the grid is in here so if i try to zoom in or zoom out i can manually try to position this thing but that's going to be a bit of a problem because the perspective distortion in the viewport does not match what i'm seeing here in this image so i need to have a way to basically go around this issue. Now, before I actually try to match the perspective, I need to make sure that I don't have any distortion in the resolution of the image. What this means is I'm gonna have to go over and check the actual size of this image. Now, if I open up the properties of image, you're gonna see the dimensions are over here. So just when you're in general, go over to details, you will see the dimension is 1000 per uh, 750 so we need to have our resolution match it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this thing over to the side i'm going to go back into max press f10 to access my uh, settings and in here in the width put in 1000 by 750 there we go so now we're going to close this and I'm going to turn on the show safe frames by holding down shift and pressing F. There we go. So now this thing has the same exact resolution as the image that we're trying to match. Now I'm going to create a box here just for a reference so I can see where my grid is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over back here in the perspective match. And I'm going to click on pick anchor object. Now this will ch uh, choose or uh, as, as you go over, it will, will uh, say that you can an object or anchor changes of distance and rotation. So for this, I'm going to click on my box in here and I'm going to click on this show vanishing lines. Now, as soon as I do this, I'm going to get these uh, three pairs of different color uh, lines. Now this is, these lines are actually coinciding with the X, Y, and Z axes that I have in the scene. So if we take a look at the lower left corner, you're going to see that the red coincides with the X, the uh, blue one is the Z, and the Y is the green. So we just need to uh, place these lines in those particular places. So let's go ahead and do that. Right here, I'm going to take this line. I'm going to put it in here and since this one is going to be the one that is going uh, from the bottom towards uh, this wall over here I'll click over here and just try to place it right here there we go now I'm going to uh, select this image or this line over here put it up in the corner and drag it so it's something like this just trying to find a place where it's going to follow along the wall line in here. Now, the problem here is when you're when you start moving these, the others are going to start slightly moving to compensate for whatever that you uh, you did. So now the blue ones are the Z axis or the height. 
So this one I want to just to place over here. There we go, something like this. This over here can follow this line. And now the only thing that I have is the red one. So this one, I'm actually gonna leave it so it's kind of following the bottom here on this cupboard. And this one will go over here and follow along this wall line. Now, if you did everything right, all of these should fall in line, but when we are moving around, some of these could shift a bit, so you just need to recompensate, get them back into position, be mindful that when you're moving these, if they intersect, they can move around. So now with what we've done, we've pretty much set the perspective distortion right. So we just need to reset the location of our cube or on our uh, coordinates that we are starting off. To do this, I can manually pan the camera or I can use some of the camera adjustments. But since I don't really know where my um, model is at the moment, so I'm just gonna select my camera and manually move it to about here. So it's around somewhere like this. Okay, so in here now, I can move this thing slightly on the horizontal, the vertical and change the distance. But here is the interesting part now. If I go ahead and delete this box with these lines set in place, if I start creating anything in this scene now, for example, let's click over here, just create a box to about around here. I can see that now when I'm dragging this, it's actually positioning it in with the right perspective distortion. And since we have the right perspective distortion and we're visually trying to guess or visually trying to trace the size of this bed, I can see that I'm starting to get some proper values or real world values for this. So it's gonna be roughly around 130, width is gonna be about 250, and height is gonna be about 95, which is more or less what you would see this thing as the regular size if you were trying to do this. Now, it, this is not 100% right, but it will give you some real world uh, scale from which you can start to build up on your scene as you start uh, modeling more and more. Another thing we can do is also we can uh, test, it, test it out on anything else that we can um, basically see. In this case, uh, uh, this table over here, I can see it's basically made out of cylinders. So we go over here, click and drag it out. So we get it to the right size, which is roughly about somewhere around here. Give it a bit of a width. Try to match the width to what we see in here. Something like this. So let's see, height about five. Radius should be about 45. There we go. So we have one in here and another one down to about here. All right, awesome. Press B so we get out of the camera. And this is what we have uh, left over. We can just try and get this thing modeled close to what we uh, need. I'm gonna try to get this thing so it follows this curvature. So I'm just gonna put an edit poly on it, attach it with the rest of them. We don't really need the top here and the bottom, so I'm gonna delete these. I'll try to select these, maybe select even these. All right, select all of that. There we go. Now select bridge, bridge. Uh, at the moment, we're actually just modeling this so it's visually close to what we are trying to do. If we were actually trying to really model this uh, table, we'd probably be better off by trying to find some reference on how this thing is made. But for just this video, 
We'll just try to make it visually close to what we're seeing in here. I'm just going to put another connect like this. All right, so it kind of follows this line well. One more connect in here. So we get this slight bend like this. All right, awesome. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shell, very slight shell. Let's try it with a 0.5. All right, awesome. Straighten corners on. Okay, for this, I can also just go in, select this base here, and press on cap, select the bottom, and just detach like that. So now with the shell, it's just going to stay on the top. The bottom here, again, we can give it a shell on its own like this and just to so i make it so it has this smoothness to it what i'm going to do is just go over edit poly isolate it select the top over here with the angle 45 select the bottom here as well give it its own smoothing group Control i to invert it give this thing its own smoothing group so now just put a turbo smooth on with the smoothing groups uh, selected, two iterations, and the isolate. Give this thing a different color. There you go. Bluish color. Move it up. Let's see if we put a turbo smooth on this thing. It's going to be a bit of a problem. But if we put a smoothing group on, the problem is solved, no more issues. So we press C. This will give us back into the camera view, which is in the right position. And now if we take a look at here, we basically modeled this table in its right place. And if we want to continue making more and more uh, models, and just by visually seeing where this thing is placed, we can continue and build this entire scene by just following uh, what we did in here by setting up all of those uh, helping guides or the perspective matches for the V-Ray camera. And with that, we are basically finished. So hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something uh, new here today. If you enjoyed the video, then please do uh, click the like button. It really does help a lot. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to support me, and the channel the support links will be below in the description of the video and as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you all in the next video bye bye